<laughs> okay. Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Bava Kama Da Yud Gimel, and we're starting four lines down. We're starting at the word Gufa, and we are continuing a sugya that we began at our previous Mishnah. Our Mishnah had said all the way back on Da Tes Amud Beis. The Mishnah there had spoken about the fact that if Hichsharti b'Miksas Nizko, the Mishnah there said that if I was an enabler of some damage, I'm obligated to pay. However, it said only Nechasim She'ein Bahen Meila. It only applied to items where uh, where Meila wasn't relevant. We're going to be analyzing this line and the remaining lines of our Mishnah, starting on Yud Gimel Amud Aleph, four lines down Gufa. We saw this brisa before. When we saw this pasuk, the Chachamim Darshan, the Rabos Kachim Kalim Shem Mamono Divir Biosi Aglili. We learn from this pasuk that Kachim Kalim have a status of Mamon Bailim. And by Kachim Kalim, that's a, a unique din. Says the Gemara Ben Azai Omer, the Rabos Es Hashlamim. This pasuk is not coming to teach us about Kachim Kalim, but to teach us that Shlamim are included in this category as well. Namely, if something has a din of Me'ila, or, according to Ben Azai, if something is a din of Shlamim, it would not be subject to the rules of our Mishnah on Daf Testament Beis. And then the close of this Brisa that we're learning now is difficult. Abba Yossi Ben Dustoy Omer, Lo Amar Ben Azai Ela Bebechor Bilvad. He tries to limit and qualify the statement of Ben Azai that he was only talking about an animal that was a Bechor. A Bechor is a type of Shlamim. Let's dig in to see exactly what's going on here. We're on Yud Gimel Amad Aleph, eight lines down Amar Mar. Let's analyze this brisa that we just learned. We had said that Ben Azai Omer Lerabos Es Hashlamim. That Lerabos Es Hashlamim, that the Pasuk, when it says, Hashem, it comes to teach us about a Shlamim. That a Shlamim, just like Me'ila, that it is not able to be subject to the consequences of our Mishnah, of Im Hichsharti, Chelek Nizko, that I'm going to be Chayv in all of it. So it says the Gemara, Lime'ute Mai, what is Ben Azai coming to exclude by that which he is coming to include? When he says, he's obviously excluding something else. So what is it that he is excluding? And the Gemara says, let's figure it out. If you want to say that when Ben Azai was, uh, when ben Azai was including Shlamim, he was excluding Bechor, that can't be. Why? Quarter of the way down. Hashta, because of the following logic. Now that we know, Uma Shlamim, Shlamim has a higher level of Kedusha than Bechor. Shetu'un and Smicha. We know, of course, that when an animal is about to be Karev, we take our hands and we put the weight of our of our body on the top of the head of the animal. Unasachim, and they require libations. At the time of a Shlamim is brought, there's a certain amount of wine that's used. Utnufas chazav ashok, and we know that we have to move the meat in our hands with the kohen, <coughs> move them around in very specific ways. Amris, in such a case, by shlamim, we had said mamon bailimhu. So then, bechor, which is even a lower level of kedusha, it doesn't have any of the features of shlamim. If we say by shlamim, which is a higher level of kedusha, that it's that it's going to be mamon bailim, then all the more so that should be true by bechor. So it can't be that that's what's being excluded by. Uh, Yossi ben Dustai. So what then does it mean? Ella says the Gemara, it must be, I'm a Reb Yochanan, it must be the Meute Meiser. Here we're talking about Meiser Behema. And what we're saying is that perhaps what we're excluding is Meiser Behema, such that if there were to be a case of Meiser Behema and that animal was my responsibility and there were damages, then the rules of the Mishnah and Testament Bays would in fact kick in. Where do we see this from? We see this Kedetanya from the Brisa, a third of the way down. We're going to learn the whole Brisa, but we don't need the first half of the Brisa for our purposes. Says the Gemara, Bebechor, in regards to Bechor, Namar, Lo Sifte, you're not allowed to redeem a Bechor. However, the Nimkar Tamchai, you're allowed to sell a Bechor. One Kohen can sell a Bechor to another if they're Tam, if there's uh, no blemishes, and if they're Chai, if they're alive. If it's a Balmum, Chai Veshachot. It can be sold either way. Now is now comes our part. The Meiser, in regards to Meiser, what does it say? The Pasuk says, Namar lo yigal. This is what the Pasuk says, lo yivakir 
Bein tov la rab, loy mi ranu, bim hamer yamir bechule lo yigoyel. So this is what the Pasuk says. Ve'enu nimkar lo chai velo shachut. Here we see that Meiser has a higher level of Kedusha because we're more strict about it. You're not allowed to sell it when it's alive. You're not allowed to sell it when it's shachut. Lo tam velo balmu. You also can't sell the Meiser when it's tam, when it when there's no blemish. And you cannot sell it even if there is a blemish. So we see from here that Meiser is what is being excluded. That's what the Gemara says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. And Ravina looks at the sheet of Rav Yochanan. Ravina said, was Masnila Asefa. Ravina says, no, the line of Rav Yochanan is not coming to explain, explain the Shita of Ben Azai, but rather it's coming to explain the Sefa of the Brisa, which was Abba Yossi Ben Dustoy. Let's see how Ravina applies the Shita of Rav Yochanan. The Gemara says third of the way down, first word on the line is Mum, second word on the line is Ravina. Ravina Masnila Asefa, the din of Rav Yochanan, applies only on the last case. What was that last case? The Gemara quotes the Shita here again. Abayosi ben Dustai Omer, lo amar ben Azai elavibachor bilvat. The only thing that was being included by the Pasuk of Umu'alama ba'ashem was in regards to the case of a Bechor. Lema'ute mai. What is this coming to exclude? When we include the case of Bechor, what are we excluding? That's a very limited list. Says the Gemara. If you want to say that the sheet of Abba Yossi ben Dustai was to exclude Shlamim, that doesn't make sense. Because Hashta says the Gemara. A Bechor, which in, in and of itself, it's inherently considered to be Kadosh Me Rechem. Because it's the animal's bechor, it's the firstborn. It becomes kadosh in the womb. There, uh, we say that it's mamonu. Who then shlamim miboya shlamim, which has less of a level, level of kedusha. The kedusha of a shlamim. He wasn't born a shlamim. Someone had to make it into a shlamim. So therefore, all the more so by shlamim, we should say mamonu. So it can't be that it's living out shlamim. That's pashan. This is where Ravina applies Rabbi Yochanan. Not like we initially learned it in regards to the sheet of Ben Azai. But rather, over here, we're seeing that the sheet of Rav Yochanan applies to the Seifa of Abba Yossi ben Dustai. And what does the Gemara say halfway down? Amar Rav Yochanan, Lemeute Meiser. We are coming, in fact, to remove the case of Meiser, Kiddetanya, like the Brisa we just saw a couple of minutes ago. Bebechor Nemar Lo Tifteh, that by Bechor it says you're not allowed to redeem it. And we only allow Venimkar Tam Chai, Ubal Mum Chai Veshachot. It, if it can only be sold from one coin to another, a bechor can only be sold if it's tam and alive, or if it's a balmum, whether or not it's alive. And b'maiser, what did we say in that brisa that we're requoting here? Ne'emar lo yigael ve'inu nimkar lo chayv lo shachal lo tam lo balmum. So over here we see that it must be that it's lemeute that when Ben Azai is talking about the case of bechor, he's excluding balmum. Says the Gemara, I don't understand why you're working so hard. The Gemara says habe bechor bilvad ka'amar. The Gemara says there's only one thing in this category, and that's Bechor. That was the language of Abba Yossi ben Dustoy. Says the Gemara Kasha, you're, you're actually right. The language of this Brisa, the Brisa that's a third of the way down on the page, less the Brisa that's at, toward the top of the page, is in fact a difficult Brisa. <laughs> Rava Amar, two thirds of the way down. My nechasim she'in bahen me'ila. He's really going back to the beginning of this sugya, which started... Um, which started just a little bit ago at the top of this page, where we're trying to figure out what was the case of Me'ila. Rava says, what was the case of Nechasim She'ein Bahen Me'ila? Our Mishnah on Dav Testament Beis said that the rules don't apply when there's Me'ila. What is a case, says the Gemara, where there's Ein Bahen Din Me'ila? Where we're talking about an animal that has no Kedusha to it at all, says the Gemara, if we're talking about an animal that has no kedush at all to regular hedyot, why did our Mishnah say that it's not me'ila? That sounds like there's an aspect of it that has kedusha. The listen to hedyot. Just write what you want to say. If what we're talking about is hedyot, talk about hedyot. Don't write that it doesn't have me'ila, which leaves an implication that perhaps it's hectish. To this, the Gemara says, Kasha, here too. This Bryce says, Miraphs and Igra. The Bryce is very difficult to understand. It doesn't seem to be clear. There's a lot of real Kashas on the Bryce. And the Gemara says a little bit more than two-thirds of the way down. Let's get into some halachic sugyas that, that apply to these areas of halacha. This one's a fascinating one. Amar Rabbi Abba, shlamim shehiziko. If a shlamim uh, causes some damage, gova mi visaron, ve'eno gova me Because it's shlamim, we can pay with the meat, but we can't pay with the emurim. Because a shlamim, the emurim get to go um, on the mizbeach. 
and they're not shy to me. I can't eat the chalav. The chalav, and they stay, uh, they stay with the, they stay on the mizbeach. So here we have an animal that we need to pay from. We have a shlamim. The regular meat is for the bailim. But the, imu, the imurim go to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So what do we do in such a case? The din is, govami besaron, when we are paying from a shlamim. We pay from the value of the regular meat. And we are not allowed to pay the value of the imurim, because the imurim belong to the mizbeach, and the basar belongs to the person. So the aspect of shlamim, that's mamun bailim, which is the meat, can be used for payment. But the aspects of the shlamim that are imurim, the parts that are supposed to stay on the mizbeach, cannot be used for payment. Says the Gemara that should be pretty pasha, pshita, a murin legavoa salki. This is really only talking about a murim, and a murim can't be used because they're not ours. They belong to a Kodesh Baruch, they're Mishulchan Gavoa Kazachu. Says the Gemara, Lo Tzricha, we're teaching a Chedesh de Kadin, legavos mi besarin keneged a murim. We only can use um, meat and we cannot use a murim, even if it means I'm not going to end up paying the whole thing. Rashi details how all the finances would work, but suffice it to say for our purposes tonight that what we're talking about is the fact that I will pay, and if uh, I end up paying and there's no other meat left, I don't have to pay anymore, even if it's at the loss of the nizak. Why is that true? Because of these psukim, these psukim which teach us, um, these psukim which teach, uh, there's actually no psukim quoted here, but the din that teaches us that the basar of the shlamim is mamun bailin, but the emurim are mishulchan. The Gemara says, Aliba Deman, who is this Shita like? E, uh, e Aliba de Rabbanon, if, is, if this follows the Shita of the Rabbanon, that you can only use the Emur, the uh, Bisaron, and you can't use the Emurim, that should be Pshita, because Amre, they say, and the Gemara doesn't detail the case, but the Mefarshim do. Let's say that Ruvain pushes his shore into Shimon's shore. Shimon's shore bumps into Levi's shore and falls into Shimon, Shimon's shore. Uh, it's too short, too shvar. Let me write that. Let's see what I write. Ruvain's cow pushed Shimon's cow into Levi's pit. That's the case we're dealing with. So there's two cows in a pit. So I'm Ruvain. I push my cow. It bumps into Shimon's cow. And then Shimon's cow falls into Levi's pit. So the Gemara says, in that case, according to the Rabbanon Pshita, 10 lines from the bottom, Ha'amre, the argument could be, if I can't get any money from, Sh from Ruvain, who pushed, then lo mehai. Then I can't get any money from the person who owns the pit, which is Levi. So Shimon is out. That makes sense. That's similar to what we're saying in our case that there are certain things that you just can't pay for. You can't use a murim, just like you can't use a murim. You're also going to be limited in collecting. In this case, when Ruvain pushed Shimon's shore into Levi's board. the aliba de Rav Nasan, and according to Rav Nasan, that's a, a little bit different. There, ha'amar ki mehai mishtale mehai. That if you can't collect from one, you can't collect from another. So says the Gemara, we therefore don't understand what the Chiddush is of this case in regards to the Gabos Mibsar and Kenegere Murim. Because Manav Shach, it doesn't seem to make sense. One Shita says you get no money. The other Shita seems to say that you get uh, you get all the money. But nobody seems to thread the needle over here that you only get the Basar but not the Emurim. So the Gemara says it could be either option. Ibai Seima Rebbe Nasan, Ibai Seima Rabbanan. It could be either or. How could it be the Rabbanon who say you can't collect from either? When do we say that if I can't collect from Ruvain, I also can't collect from Levi? That's true when Ruvain pushed his shore into Shimon's shore where there's two animals. I could have argued that if there was only one animal, that from whatever I'm able to pay you, then perhaps I will pay you even from the bus or just not from the Amurin. And therefore, we have a reasonable approach according to the Rabbanon. And through four lines from the bottom, he by same Rabbi Nasan. I could even argue that this case of Lagabos mi Basar Keneged Emurim, where we see that the, that we pay from the Basar but not the Emurim, I could even argue that that's Rabbi Nasan. Hasam hu the Amar only in the case where Ruvain, where Ruvain's animal pushed Shimon's animal into Levi's boar. Hasam hu the Amar le Bala Shor le Bala Bor Ana to Roy bebircha Ashkachte. Lemaisa, at the end of the day, you made a pit and my animals in your pit. And if I can't collect from Ruvain, this is all Shimon talking. If I can't collect from Ruvain who pushed my shore, Lemaisa, if I look in your pit, my animals there and Boras Bershus Harabim, a Bora, you're obligated. That's one of the Avos Nezikin. So that's how it could possibly be 
Uh, well, this is the first half of how it could be Reb Zalsan. And on the top of Yud Gimel Amid Beis, and we're going to be going until about seven lines or so from the bottom of the page. Aval Hacha, in our case, Mimotzi Amar, in our case of the of uh, the shlamim, where we have to pay from a shlamim, mimatsi amar basar azik emur and lo azik. You can't separate out and say that the animal only the meat damaged, but not the emur. They're all part of one animal. So that's how the Gemara concludes that we could understand our case of paying only from the meat and not from the emur to be both like the rabbanon and Reb Nassan. and a slightly different case. Amar Rava. Toda, an animal that's brought with a toda, let's remember a toda, when an animal that's being brought for a toda, it comes along with 40 lechamim, uh, 30 of them are regular bread and 10 of them are matzah. So toda shehizika, gova mi besar, vena gova mi milachma. You can only collect from the flesh, but you can't take the bread as money. That you're not allowed to do. Says the Gemara, lechem pshita. That should be obvious. Says the Gemara, no. Yud gimel amad beis, four lines down. Seifa itzrichle. We need this din um, about the lechem because of the seifa. Nizak ochel basar umiskaper may be lechem. Says the Gemara that the nizak can take the meat. Umiskaper, the mazik who actually was bringing the toda, he gets kapara for the bread. Says the Gemara that's also pashat hanami pshita. Says the Gemara that's not true. Maudetema, I might have thought you can't separate the bread from the korban. That kevan de lechem hechshera de zevachu. That because lechem is the reason why I can bring a korban. If you bring a toda without a korban, so then you're a mess. So therefore, both of them have to come together. How can it be that we that we we split up the the halves of this korban where the animal is being uh, consumed by you and I'm bringing the lechem? It doesn't make any sense. Kamash malon the lechem chiyuva baila chiyuva de baila. It has to be that both of them are brought at the same time. So that's why there was a chiddush de kadin that it's mi besara that you can only collect from the meat and not from the lechem. A couple of very short Gemaras, seven lines down on your Gimel Amit Beis, the Gemara said, Nechasim Shehein Shel Bnei Bris. So let's review. On Testament Beis, at our Mishnah, which we've been analyzing now for four blot, we discussed this idea that I'd be obligated if I caused some of the responsibility, I'm obligated to pay Kol Nizko. And we had said that that was only true in certain cases, um, and it has to be that Nechasim Shehein Shel Bnei Bris, it has to be property of B'nai Bris, of Yidin. So the Gemara says, let's analyze the Mai. What is this coming to teach me? This is something that I already know. If you want to tell me that we're coming to exclude a non-Jew, I already learned this. Where did I learn about the fact that when there's a non-Jew that the rules change? The Mishnah on Testament base is saying you're going to be held accountable, but not if it's a, a non-Ben Bris, meaning not if it's a guy. And that's a, we already learned that then. So the Gemara says, you're right, we did learn it. Tana v'hadr mefarish. The Gemara gives a, an answer that in words is easy, but in concept is difficult. The Gemara says, yeah, yeah, we're just explaining what we're doing. But really, we brought a second Mari Makom that teaches the same exact din. So it's a little difficult, but nevertheless, that's what the Gemara accepts as the final answer. We also said that there were nechasim miyuchadim, uh, that uh, the property has to belong to someone, lema'ute mai. Where is it that we would say that the halachos don't apply in our Mishnah from Testament Beis? The Gemara says, Amr of Yehudim, lema'ute zesha omer shorcha hizik, vezesha omer shorcha hizik. Classical case of I don't know what happened. So everybody says the other person's wrong, right? So what happened is I say, no, 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 no. no. The, the neighbor, it wasn't my animal, it was your animal. You say, no, 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 it wasn't my animal, it was your animal. So there, we don't know what happened. There's an element of suffix. So therefore, in such a case, we would assume that the rules of our Mishnah don't apply and you'd be putter. Says the Gemara, if that's true, we already learned it. Hatani lekaman, we're a third of the way down on your Gemal Amid Beis. Hayushnaim rodfin achar echad. Two people are running after one. Ze omer shorcha hizik, ve omer shorcha hizik, shneim p'turin. We see already that this idea is that they're already putter. So why is it that our Mishnah would have to then repeat the din? If what we're learning from the case of Nechasim Yuchadim, that we have to know who we're talking about and can't have an element of suffix, that's something that we've already discussed. So this, the Gemara says, as we did with the previous section of the Gemara, Tani Vahadr Mefarish. We're just explaining ourselves, but no need to, to worry too much. We're allowed to have it in two places under these circumstances. The Gemara then adds, Bimas Nisa Tana, we have a Mishnah that says, Prat, 
hefker. This is a second answer. We had initially said that what are we excluding when we say that the properties have to be owned by someone? Answer number one that we tried to say is perhaps when there's a machloke, so I say shor chahizik, and you say shor chahizik. The Gemara says there's another thing that might be left out by the words nechasa hamiyuchadim, and that is lenechse um, hefker. That if there we're talking about a case where there's hefker, so the Gemara says hey chidami, where is the hefker in this case? If you want to say that someone who owns a, a shore, he was nagach, a shore shall have care, well, you don't have to worry about that because man there's no one who's claiming from you because the shore is hefker. The animal that you killed is hefker, there's no bylet. Ella says the Gemara, the Gemara says, the nagach torah de hefker, the torah didan. If in fact an animal that was hefker damaged your animal, well, then just go take the animal to damage and you can keep it because it's hefker. Lazo the lace, no problem at all. So the Gemara says, what were we talking about? You're right about the model that we're talking about where an animal that was hefker damaged your animal. And yes, in theory, you're allowed to take that animal. So if you're on the way to taking that animal and someone acquires the hefker, that's the case that we're dealing with in our Mishnah when we talk about nichse hefker, that by nichse hefker, you're going to be putter. Says the Gemara, Ravina Amar, Ravina gives another qualified answer. He says the case that we're excluding is a case where there was Nagicha, and then afterwards the animal was Muktash to the Besa Mikdash. Initially it was Hefker. So let's say it's my animal, and Nagach uh, Kachikdish, the animal that was Hefker killed my animal, and then that animal was Muktash. So that's another case scenario, Nagach Be'achar Kachikdish, or there was Nagicha, and then afterwards it was freed. Tanya Namihachi, the Brysa supports this idea. We're halfway down, another 15, 20 lines to go. What does the Brysa say? Everything that we've said in the last few lines concisely. Yeser al Kain Amar Yehuda, Filu Nagach Veachar Kach Hiktish, or Nagach Veachar Kach Hivkir, in both cases, Potter. Why? Shene Amar, Vuhu Ad Vivala Vehemis Ish Vigomer. We need it to be that the Misa, that the time that the animal that was Hefker killed, and when it was Ha'amad Abedin, when, when he went to go ask Geshayla and Bezdin, that the Hefker is still Hefker and that it wasn't made into anything else. And the Gemara says, Do we need it to be that way for the Gemara? Then not just when you bring the animal to Bezdin, but when Bezdin finally paskins on that animal that it needs to die, the Gemara says, how can you not say that? Ha, the Pasuk says, Hashor Yisakel. The Gemara din, who So it seems to be that we need the status of the animal in three places, not in two. We need it at the Shas Misa. We need it at Ha'amad Abedin. When you bring the animal to Bezdin, we need it at the Gemara din. And the Gemara acquiesces to this concern as we get to the two dots. Ela, ela Ema, you're right. Ad Shetei Misa, Ve'ha'amad Abedin, Ve'gemar din, Shavin Ke'echad. The only way we're going to be chai when there's an animal that's hefker is if the animal that's hefker killed, and while it was still hefker, there was ha'amad abedin, meaning if he killed my animal, I go to Bezdin and make a taina against that animal. And then also the din is given that way. That is the only time we would say that you're a putter, that you're chai, right? In any other case where there's a status change, you'd be putter. That brings us to the two dots of chutz me rishus hamiyuchedas lamazik, and here we're going to analyze what these words in the Mishnah mean. We had said that you're going to be obligated to pay for damages unless it's rishus miyuchedas lamazik. What does that mean? That means that I have a backyard, and I shared this when we learned this Mishnah many days ago. If I have a backyard with a Rottweiler, and you bring your little bunny to play in my backyard, you're not smart, because my dog will eat your for your bunny in about five seconds. So that's what the Gemara says. To Amar Lei, Torcha Birushusi, my boy. Why would you bring your animal into my backyard and complain about what happened in my backyard? Come at your own risk. So I don't know how this works. I don't know. But if uh, you know you have a dog, and let's say you have a dog in your house, someone comes over and the dog bites you. So based on this, there'll be zero obligation from the bylaw. It's not you. You brought yourself to my house. Enter at your own risk. Okay. <laughs> no one can hear you. So <laughs> let's assume there was such a scenario. Your backyard case seems obvious. It seems that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't control what your animal does. The only yeah. problem is, is you know, you get into Shmira questions if the animal is uh, Muad versus Tom. And if it is Muad, 
and you bring your right correct but i'm wondering I'm, I'm, no no i'm wondering like is is you coming over right. enter so at your own like risk so do i have more of a need to do shmira? this comes up at every bris where there's a dog which is most of them where they ask me do you like dogs i say i don't mind dogs but i don't want them to attack me while i'm doing a bris so put them in another room so there i ask for them to do me an extra shmira. Would I sue them if the dog bit me? Probably not. So Lemaisa does seem that way from the Gemara. De Omar lay Torcha Birshusi, my boy. This is quoted in Shulchan Aruch. This language, uh, yeah, this language is quoted in Shulchan Aruch. In Choshen Mishpat Shin Pei Tesifu. We can look it up and see what the applications are. The next two dots, Birshus Nizak Vehamazik. This was cryptic in our Mishnah and Testament base where when a property, seemingly the Pashta says that when it's owned by two people, so the Gemara says that under those circumstances, you'd also be putter from damages. Amar of Chizda, Amar Avimi, Chatzar HaShutchfin, Chayev Ba Al HaShain Ve'al HaRegel. That if in fact, there's a Chatzar that's owned by two people, that I would be Chayev on damages that are of Shain or that are of Regel, regel even though in general, it's putter in Rishus HaRabim, but since there's Shutfis, so they're no longer nechshav as Rishus Harabim. Kaman. What then was the heter of our Mishnah? So the Gemara says, Chutz mi Rishus HaMiyuchedes Lamazik de Pater, that we just discussed, and the Rishus HaNizak Vamazik Shehizik Chav Hamazik, and all of that is approach number one. Rabbi Lazar Omer, no, you've mislearned the whole thing. He disagrees <laughs> with Rav Chizda. And he says, Pater ala Shein vala Regel, that if there is a partnership of a property and there was an Av Nizikin of Shein Regel, you'd be Pater. Here is how they understood the end of our Mishnah on Testament Beis. Chutz me Rishus Hamiyuchedes Lamazik, a property that's specific to the Mazik, as mentioned. Why is your shore in my property? The Rishus Hanizak Ve'Amazik Nami Pater, and they hold that Rishus Hanizak Ve'Amazik. If there's a an ownership, a co-ownership, you'd be Pater. And what does the last part of the Mishnah mean? Ukshehizik Chav Hamazik. That's La Asuye Karen. That last case is to teach us to include Karen. And this actually ties back to a sugya that we learned about 10 days ago. Hanicha Shmuel, this works out great to Shmuel, who says that we need to add in Karen. According to Rab, who says that when we said the word shor, that already included Karen, then then what does the end of our Mishnah come to include? Says the Gemara, it's to teach us about the following b'risa. We're on the first of the very long lines. Eight lines or so from the bottom of the page. Make that nine lines from the bottom of the page on Yud Gimel Amid Beis. What does the Brisa say? Shehizik Chav Amazik. What does that teach us? Lehavi Shomer Chinam Vehashoel Nosei Sacher Vehasocher The Arba Shomrim. That those cases teach us that there those cases are going to be Chayim. Shehizika Bahema Birshusan. If there's an animal that damaged. Tom Mishalim Chati Nezek. If there was an animal that was a Tom, a docile animal, one that we don't have to fear at the moment is damaging, then we'd have to pay Chati Nezek. Umuad Mishalim Nezek Shalim. If the animal is dangerous, you'd have to pay Nezek Shalim. And Nifrit Sabalayla Oshe Partsua Listen Miyatsa Vihizika. If the field broke, if the door broke at night, Oshe Pirtsuha Listen, or if uh, bandits broke through the walls, Miyatsa Vihizika, in that case, your putter as well. So that's what the Gemara says is being added, that it's the case of the Arba Shomrim is being added, according to Belazar, to our Mishnah. We're going to stop here at Omar Mar, and tomorrow night, Mir Tzashem, we will uh, be navigating a, an analysis of this Brisa that we just learned, which, according to Belazar, was the addition to our Mishnah of the Arba Shomrim. We'll stop right here, wishing you all a beautiful night. Today.